What's up everybody, Kinetic here, and welcome back to Dragoborn. This is going to be a new trial deck opening. Uh, in the last video, we did Volume 1, the Shadow Legion, which was quite cool. And uh, now that I've given it some thought after we did this video, the dice that come with the, the trial decks and the banner cards are both required to play Dragoborn, which unfortunately, especially the dice, do not come with the uh, the booster packs. Neither the dice, of course, and neither do the banner cards come with the booster packs. So while you can try and make a, a deck yourself without buying the, uh, the trial decks uh, using the booster packs, you might have some difficulty because, like I said, you will need the dice and you will also need the banner cards as well for your deck, which you can buy separately, I'm sure, um, but you might just want to make your life easier by going ahead and getting one of these trial decks. Uh, but if you missed the last video, you should definitely check it out. I'll have a link to that down in the description of this video. Uh, Shadow Legion Trial Deck Volume 1 was pretty cool. And we also opened two of the booster packs in that video as well. This video, brought to you by Supersonico, this video will have Trial Deck Volume 3. And this is the Alpha Dominance Pack. Thank you very much, Sonico. That was a, a Christmas gift, by the way. It's become like a tradition where Kanako gives me like a new Super Sonico figure. I don't know why I told her to stop giving them to me. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to do Alpha Dominance here in this video. And uh, just like in the last video, we're also going to open up two packs of the Oath of Blood expansion. This was the second booster volume that they put out last year. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll get this sliced open. I don't know why I like to do it from... The bottom, I suppose I can do it from the top as well. Why don't we, we try opening up from the top this time instead? There we go, a couple of slits right there, and we will just puck up right there. Get that slided open. So the comp the packaging, I think, is, uh, like I mentioned before, pretty good. I think it does a, a good job of uh, showing off what the product is about. It gives you a uh, an idea of what the game is about. It gives you a card list kind of a preview of the cards inside and stuff like that links to the YouTube channel so that's pretty cool and uh, well it's not the, the best way to store your cards it's not exactly a, uh, a deck box uh, this plastic can uh, can do uh, well I suppose for uh, for card storage in the meantime there we go so we just flip that back and then inside of here go ahead and close that up so in the Shadow Legion trial deck we had black red and yellow banner and flavored cards this is a blue green and red deck of course at the back we've got a rule book we've got a play mat one of these times i'm going to open up the play mat and show you guys more of what that looks like not in this video though we've got uh, we got some other cool things including these booster packs that i'd rather be showing off in this video so here is the alpha dominance deck we've got a little plastic thingy around the top there just go ahead and slide that off. All right, so the first card that we have is Izarko Tvash, or maybe the T is silent. Vash? Izarko Vash, that's what I'm going to say. Born of Magma, he is a 7-cost 6-6 six, six creature, fire creature with a couple of auto abilities here. Looks really badass, and this is, oh man, that is a beautiful looking hollow. They call it hollow. I guess that's short for hologram. But most of us are still going to say foil, aren't we? <laughs> We've got enough terminology to remember as it is with TCGs. When this creature is summoned, choose one of your die and change its value to 6. Then choose any number of opposing creatures and deal 6 damage. Divide it as you choose among those creatures. Nice. Also has another one. It, this is the Drago Cross, Red Drago Cross. When this creature is destroyed, Choose any number of opposing creatures and deal 7 damage divided as you choose among those creatures. Very cool. So, Izarko here comes in and out of play in a blaze of glory. Very cool. So we got one, two of him. Normal and uh, foil version on the front. Next up, what do we got here? This is Thornbark Walker, a 5 cost for 4 with a Fort Burst ability. Summon this creature. All right. We've got one, two, three, four of him. Next up, the art just keeps getting better with these cards, I swear. We've got a four cost two, three Elven Farstrider with a continuous ability. That's what C-O-N-T means. For each of your non-green creatures, this creature gets 
plus one plus one. Oh wow, that's a really nice enchantment as well to uh, to have on this card. We've got one, two of those. Sadly, no hollow. I would really would have liked to have seen that as a hollow. Next up, we've got Prime Prime Ape Javelinier. Can you guys see that alright? I think you can. <laughs> uh, that is a 4 cost, 5 4, no special abilities. We got 1, 2 of him. Next up, Fleetwing Sprite, 2 cost, 1 1 with an auto ability. When this creature is summoned, you may put a card from your hand into your resource zone. Oh wow, that's a nice way to, uh, to ramp up. That's cool. It also has a Fort Burst ability. Put this card into your resource zone. Oh. The four burst abilities, again, are entirely optional. It's not something you have to, to do. If it turns out to, to be one of the uh, the barrier cards that you set in the beginning of the game. Next card, we've got a spell, Nature's Touch. It has Ambush. Okay. When a creature at this fort is destroyed during your opponent's turn, if this card is an Ambush, you may summon this creature. Oh. Or you may summon that creature. So basically, that's a, a kind of... Rebirth skill for a, uh, a downed creature. That's that's nice. We got two of those. All right, cool. Next up, we have Leilania's Call, a two-cost nature spell. Summon a cost four or less green creature, or a cost three or less creature from your hand. Okay, so four or less green, or three or less non-green, or or whatever. From your hand. Okay, cool. And it has a Fort Burst ability. Put this card into your discard pile and summon a cost seven or less creature from your hand. Man, that is that that's nice. I, <laughs> I want to play that card. That, that sounds like a great way to just bring out something really badass. Like for example, uh, Izaro, actually, right? Because it didn't have to be uh, green. I don't think. Four costs. We've got Draft Tamar Kingpin. Four costs, three four with a couple of auto abilities. And this is a foil, definitely, as you can see. When this creature is summoned, you may choose to die and exchange their values. Huh, okay, so, for example, if you if you set up your uh, your Drago shields with this blue and green, uh, one of them may be, for example, five, and another one may be, let's just say, three. Uh, then you can you can change, I suppose, swap those values, is, is what it, uh, it sounds to me like, with this card, so the the green would become five and the blue would become three uh, as you choose like that. That's uh, that's interesting. I can see how that could uh, that could be beneficial. So we got one of him, two actually, one normal, one foil. Next up, we've got Gilman Raider, a two cost, three two. No special abilities, but uh, he is a badass by default because he is a uh, a Gilman pirate. <laughs> Next up, looks like we got another uh, Gilman Pirate here, but this is a spell to cost Rejuvenate for each of your forts with one or less barriers. Draw a card with one or less, okay. And then it has a green Drago Cross. Die one to three, then put the top card of your deck into your resource zone. Also has Fort Burst as well, wow. This says, play your card without paying the cost. Huh. Next up, we got a six cost all guns blazing spell. We've got one, two, three, four of these. Wow, okay. For six cost, choose an opponent's fort and rest all creatures at that fort. Ooh. Four burst ability. Also put this card into your discard pile. Choose a creature, rest it, and draw a card. Nice. That's a great way to uh, to set up an attack, I think, with those cards. Still no foils. Or wait, no, this one is a foil, I think. Yep, we got a Another foil, finally. Six cost, five, five. Storm Feather Screecher has a continuous effect. When this creature deals damage to a fort, it deals two damage instead. That's interesting. And then another continuous effect has green Drago Cross. This creature gets plus one, plus one. I'm really curious. I'm going to have to think about that a little bit longer. When this creature deals damage to a fort, it deals two damage instead. Damage to a fort, two damage instead. So, because you have two barrier cards, that, does that mean it hits both barrier cards? Because one point of damage that makes contact with a barrier, I mean, or anything, it doesn't even matter, according to the rules, uh, counts as a hit towards the barrier and forces the uh, the player to either play that card or put it into their hand. Huh. 
that's interesting. So we got a foil version and also a, a regular version. Next up, we've got Carefree Orc, another foil, two cost, two one with an auto. When this creature attacks, you may choose a creature and deal one damage to it. Hmm. Okay. Got two of him. Next up, we've got four cost Wandering Orc. It is a five four. No special ability, but he looks pretty awesome. Two, three, four of that guy. All right, cool. Next up, lots of orc and kind of like ogre looking guys in this deck. Also, three cost four, three bone club. Oh, he's a giant bone club giant. Yeah, no thanks. I don't, I don't think feel like getting clubbed by you, dude, but I'm glad you'll be on my team if I'm playing this deck. Four of him. Oh, oh, I remember this card. I've seen this before. Definitely, who could forget? A card with art like that. That is a three cost, four one hidden blade creature. Has a four burst ability. Summon this creature. Nice. One, two, three, four. Oh man, I really wish this was freaking foil. I I'm really wondering if like the the foil uh, or or which ones in the trial decks and which which one of them become foils is. Is decided already when they put these trial decks together or whether it's entirely random um, hmm cuz yeah like if if it's just RNG that kind of sucks cuz I really would have liked this to be <laughs> like I said a, a foil version but hey this looks amazing as a uh, as a foil Highland Rogue a one cost one one creature it has an auto ability when this creature attacks a fort if another of your creatures attack that fort during this turn this creature gets plus two, plus two for this turn. Ooh, nice. That's a that's a great way to uh, to let somebody else go in first, attack, and uh, and then get bonus uh, damage and endurance with uh, with your rogue card. Very cool. So we got one normal and three, or excuse me, one foil and three normal versions. Next up, we've got torch. This is a three cost fire spell. Choose a creature and deal X damage to it, where X is the value of one of your red dice. Okay, so kind of similar to the first card. Has a Fort Burst ability. Play this card without paying the cost. All right, nice. Got one, two of those. And, oh, looks like we're at the uh, the end here, more or less. We got a green banner card, blue and red. The art on the blue card is especially cool looking to me. I really like that. And then at the end, this would be our PR card. That's, uh, that's what I found out after Doing the, the Shadow Legion deck, the the last card in the back is a random PR card. And you know it's a PR card because it says it down there at the bottom, or at least I can read that. I don't know if you guys can. It says DB for Dragoborn and then PR uh, next to that. So this is Aldian Verdant Protector, a 3 cost 3-3. Three, three. All kinds of crazy stuff going on there. Uh, let's see if we can get the focus auto. When this creature is summoned, you may choose one of your barriers and move it to another fort what oh man i like that when this creature is uh blue drago crossed choose two opposing dice and exchange their values two opposing dice so that's very interesting as in dice on the your your opponent's side and exchange their values huh that uh that could be a good way to to weaken maybe their uh uh, their Drago shield that they've set up to make it easier to break down that shield to get to the fort. Very, very nice. So that's a look at the Alpha Dominance Trial deck. Really, really cool stuff. Some of these cards I would have preferred to be uh, hollowed or foiled instead of others, but uh, still, very, very cool mechanics going on here. I like the uh, the rejuvenation type spells, the pirate theme on some of the other guys. Really, really nice stuff. All right, so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a couple of the booster packs from the Oath of Blood expansion. All right, so here we go, pack number one. So as as I kind of showed but completely ignored in the last video, we got this little uh, slit right there in the top. I'm going to go ahead and do it this time. I'm just, I'm nervous that I might accidentally like tear the card uh, by uh, by doing it like this. That's why I... I pulled it like the more traditional way in the uh, in the last video, but that that's not so bad. I could probably get used to that after having done it enough times. There we go. So inside of these uh, inside of these booster packs comes with eight random cards. Let's see, and at least one of them are guaranteed to be rare or higher. We've got 
Risen Crusader, a 2 cost creature skeleton, who's a 2-3, a no special abilities, uh, but he does look like a badass. I really like the, the art, especially for the undead for some reason, is, uh, is really attractive to me. Next up we've got Earthbreaker Titan, a 5 cost, 7-5. Again, this will be a, a common, probably the first, what, 3, 1, 2, yeah, the first... Four actually, the first four of the uh, the cards in the uh, in the booster packs are common cards, and then we start getting better rarities after that. Very cool. Next up, we've got uh, Chroma Gear Zealot, two cost, two one, with a siphon ability. All your machines get plus one, plus one for this turn, and also the the white. Oh, uh, that's a Drago Cross. Okay, white. White represents that it can be uh, any color. There are no actual white resources, so white just means it from any color. When this creature attacks or blocks, draw a card and discard a card from your hand. Okay. That's cool. Next up, we've got Swampland Berserker, a 5 cost, 5-7 five, creature. Very, very nice. And I think this would make for, yeah, this would be our first uncommon card, a 7 cost Devour spell. Each player shuffles all of their resources back into their decks. What? Man, you could really screw somebody's game up. <laughs> but maybe save your own by uh, by doing something like that. Very interesting. Number... What card are we on? This would be number six. Yeah, number six. Grimblade Fighter is a four cost, five one creature with an auto ability. When this creature is summoned, if you have a black creature... Choose an opposing creature and deal 2 damage to it if that creature was destroyed. By this effect, your opponent discards a card from your hand. Ouch. Man, that's that's nasty. Okay. <laughs> and oh, we've got a we've got a foil card, boys. A common Supreme Judgment. Hey, I've seen this card before. I think we actually didn't didn't we have this in the uh, the Shadow Legion uh deck, I believe? Well, now we got a a foil version. 2 cost Light spell, Supreme Judgment, destroy all, oh my god, black shields, right, Drago shield, and I think that's green, all black and green Drago shields, man, it also has a, a die effect, one to two, then draw a card, dang, so that's a great way to, uh, to get your assault on your opponent's fort started, that's for sure. And finally, at the back, we have a... I guess this would be a rare, according to the uh, the number of globes at the bottom there. 5 cost, 5-5, five, five, Dark Diviner. I believe I've seen the art for this card, but I don't know its abilities. Siphon, black 4, each player discards a card from their hand. Choose a cost 2 or less creature from your discard pile and return it to your hand. I, I always love those mechanics. Getting your cards back from uh, the discard pile is uh, is always fun and really frustrating probably for your opponents. I, I, I would think so for pretty much everybody because I know it, it even frustrates me. Even though I love it as a mechanic, it frustrates me to kill something and then have it come back from the dead just to, uh, to haunt me again. So first card in the second and final booster pack, we have two, the Potioner, very cute card here. 2 cost, 2-1. Two, when this creature is summoned, if you have a non-blue banner, look at the top card of your deck and put it on the top or bottom of your deck. Huh. It, huh? If you have a non-blue banner... Oh, okay. In other, so in other words, this is a good card to have that uh, is a multicolored deck. You could, if you wanted to, make it a completely monocolored deck. Uh, deck, but to me it seems like it'll be a lot more fun and, uh, and interesting if you have, for example, red, green, blue, or black, red, yellow, like in the uh, the Shadow Legion deck. Good stuff. Next card, 2 cost 2-2, two, two, Tide Chaser Cannoneer. When this creature attacks, if you have a non-blue banner, your opponent puts two cards from the top of their deck into their discard pile. Oh wow, so... Very, almost like brother and sister, sort of, <laughs> to each other in terms of uh, the mechanics of what these cards are doing. All right, next up we've... Oh, that is sick. I... Oh, that may be one of the best cards I've seen yet, art-wise. Oh, man. 
Just imagine that as a foil, that would look so freaking good. A 3 cost 2 3 augmented stone gazer. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love the, the contrast of the fiery orange and the black and almost like a green hint in the, uh, the background. That is nice. When this creature is summoned, you may choose one of your other machines and destroy it if you do draw two cards. For a common, I mean, man, that's that's what gets me about these cards. It, even just the common cards look so freaking good. Like that, for example. Next up, Canopy Scout, a 2 cost 2-2. Two, two. He looks pretty cool. At the start of your draw step, or when this creature is summoned, look at two cards from the top of your deck and put them on the top of your deck in any order. Oh, I love that mechanic. That is one of my favorites, man. Like, kind of like get a uh, get get a roll going there with knowing what's coming uh, and then having a, a better plan for it when it actually arrives in your hand. Those are really fun to play. Two costs, Dignified. Brawler is a 1-2 with a Siphon. This creature does not take damage for this turn. Oh, okay. Next up, another yellow card. Five costs, 4-4, four, four, Arsenal of Justice. <laughs> Man, what a title. Arsenal of Justice. He has a continuous effect. Your other machines get plus one, plus one, and cannot be chosen by opposing spells or abilities. What? So it basically, like, in using Magic the Gathering terms, makes them hexproof then. Maybe, uh, maybe Dragoborn needs to, uh, to come up with their own term for that, <laughs> instead of always saying, uh, cannot be chosen, or, yeah, cannot be chosen by opposing spells or abilities. Um, has an auto as well. Blue Drago Cross, when this creature attacks, reveal the top card of your deck, and if it is a machine, put it into your hand. Huh, okay. Next up, we've got Red Fervent Battlesmith, a 2 cost 2-2. Two, two. When this creature is Red Drago Cross, you may change the value of one of your dice to match one of your other red dice. Huh, okay. So, matching up, if you, let's say you're a red die that uh, that turn rolled really high, then you can have one of your other die match that value, or change the value of one of your red die to match one of your other die. Okay, yeah, so same thing one way or another, uh, just basically increasing the uh, the value of, uh, of your red or another die. Okay, cool. And finally, in the back, wow. Seven cost, seven, seven. Zavzas, Zavzas. Uh, me <laughs> mechanized Fury. Look at that freaking card, man. When this creature attacks, you may choose X machines from your discard pile and put them on the bottom of your deck. If you do, choose an opposing fort and deal X damage to all creatures at that fort. And if this creature is Drago Cross, deal X damage to all opposing uh, Drago shields of any color. Man! I mean, that you talk about getting bang for your buck. That's a that's a hell of a creature's ability right there for for seven cross or seven cost. I mean, <laughs> well, I'm really pleased with the cards that came out of the uh, the booster packs today. We got a couple of cards that mechanics wise are really, really cool looking. Some amazing uh, cards in terms of their art. And uh, we even got a couple of, uh, of nice foil cards as well. This I'm very excited to to have found because I know I've seen this before and, and it's very stunning uh, art wise and also quite a powerful creature as well. And uh, what was the other one? Oh, this one. This one really stands out. I mean, again, even though it's just a common, it's just so freaking cool looking. And then that last one, the uh, the mechanized fury, Zav Zavzas, 777, with all of his crazy abilities. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video on Drago Cross. In the next video, I'm going to be showing off another trial deck, the Reaper's Gift. So make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss the next video. I'll, of course, be talking about other TCGs here on the channel, not just Drago Born. Uh, but also Magic the Gathering, Vanguard, Force of Will, as more as uh, more trips to card shops here in Japan. In the meantime, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Click the like button to support TCG videos here on the channel, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Thanks again for watching. This is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time.